Yeah, I want to put something out about STDs and prostitutes, and uh, this is actually be from a health aspect. Now, I cannot make uh, broad-based claims on anything, but uh, I am suspecting something that, you know, I can't really even say it's a guaranteed uh, something, but it would be something good to do uh, if somebody is in this, um, you know, in the sex industry or whatever you want to call it, uh, that uh, would do this as an extra precaution besides all the other precautions they take. Now, I just want to say that the people that are in the sex industry are as variety, as varied as the human race is, period. I mean, it's almost like uh, all kinds of people are in the sex industry, from good to bad, from any age group to any type of personality, reason, intelligence, or whatever the heck it is. It's, it's, it's a very variety, it's a very wa wide variety of type of people that are in it because actually on the um, television and Hollywood portrayal of the sex industry it might be portrayed something like this you know somebody standing there on a corner or whatever but it could be um, somebody dressed like a you know, I don't know uh, a second grade school teacher very conservative and actually that's usually the case if they're out on the street or whatever to not make it obvious but the thing is I want to get onto something with the health aspect to this and I, I just want to state something else though this this industry has actually been around for thousands of years it's gone back all the way to antiquity and it depends on what country it's in or where what setting it's in whether how it's looked upon it it's also how it's looked upon it depends on who's doing the looking at it or who's doing the judging on it but it's a matter of customs norms of the culture in ancient cultures it wasn't really looked down upon and even in today's culture some of it is glorified maybe unjustifiably but in certain cases it may be just it depends on anything because like I said it's ver it's varied very much as to who is actually the one that's in the industry itself but, um, you know, the problems actually occur a lot of times because it only takes one instance where somebody can get a life debilitating STD from something or whatever. And today they have the new designer diseases out there where even uh, besides HIV, Lyme disease uh, has been now been uh, associated with being an STD, uh, which anything could actually be an STD if there's an exchange of well, bodily fluids or whatever you want to put it but the thing is uh, I want to present something because um, I don't know if this message would get out to the right people or what because it's it's not really for the general audience per se but it's not going to be against the general audience but a lot of times even people in the general audience are very much have licentious times in their life and there's you know there's always those times that they make something happens or whatever and uh, they're like oh my god whatever but everybody pretty much even though even if they condemn uh, people that have licentious behavior most of those people are guilty of it themselves that's pretty much the norm despite you know the front of what they put upon uh, and this is true even amongst some of the most uh, the higher echelons in the political and religious world too it's it's pretty common it's not something to be ignored but the ones who pay the price the most are the ones without the money and that is where I want to get to that will be the point of this video because um, initially they used to give like when a a HIV or AIDS or HIV came on the scene they used to give this stuff called AZT and it was actually probably worse. The treatment might have been as bad as the, as the disease itself. Maybe worse in some cases. And a lot of people died from this treatment. But it was also expensive. Uh, and people that could not afford it, which is usually many times are the ones that are in the sex industry. They can't afford this. Now, the other side of this deal is a lot of people in the sex industry... And this is um, one thing that is probably a truism. Oh, it depends, I guess, on the person. But it's probably a truism actually throughout the whole human race. 
a lot of people have this inner death wish. It's like they don't want to uh, survive and thrive. And even if you told them, you know, here's a magic thing that could make sure you're 100% fine all the time, uh, they won't do it. Now, hopefully what I'm going to present here, I have a suspicion that this is a lot stronger than I initially suspected. Um, and I heard some things, but now that I'm really piece, putting two and two together, um, there might be something, well, there's something you should do if you are in a sex industry that you should do in addition to your other precautions. And I actually put a video out on this before about uh, sex workers in the industry of uh, some of the uh, things they should do with their health. But it, it's almost like a mute point because a lot of people uh, have an inner death wish. You know, it's like they're in the sex industry, they smoke a lot of cigarettes, they take drugs, they drink, and they don't care, you know, that's someday I'm going to die anyway, and that's what they think. Well, I don't know, It's but then again, it's not everybody, so it's for a niche audience, I guess. But um, there's other things out now where they have these, uh, say for instance, if they had the AIDS virus or the HIV virus, they got stuff like this, which is uh, very powerful to control it, and this is probably a reason they'll never find a cure, because... This stuff is like over $20,000 a year in medicine, and uh, it's like a triple medicine that's in one pill. That's why they call it a tripla, and they will, um, you know, they will not give up this profitability because, I don't know, they must have tens of billions of dollars coming in on, on this drug, but it's probably not, It's if it's some ordinary female that does not have money, and she's in, stuck in a sex industry, she's not going to be able to afford this. And eventually, it's going to take a toll on her health, her looks, and her income even from the sex industry, and she's going to die. So, I'm going to state, I don't know if this is going to work or not, but I'm having a lot of suspicions now about liposomal vitamin C from a million different angles. Not ordinary vitamin C, and I don't know if this works as good as intravenous vitamin C, but if you can actually get, um, and it's impossible to get medically trained people in the United States to administer intravenous vitamin C, impossible, period. But this may be another edge to take, but you know what I am thinking is that if liposomal vitamin C from non-genetically modified sources is taken in vast quantities, um, by these people that are probably exposed to, you know, toxic elements and other types of STDs or whatever that could problem they can have, that they will might, um, well, let me put it this way, I don't want to promise nothing out of this deal because I don't know. I don't know. I've read that massive doses of vitamin C pretty much, if it, it can go against Ebola, I'm thinking, uh... Couldn't it go against HIV? But I've also read, and I don't know what the thing is, I don't know the details of the situation, is that I showed this drug here before AZT. Um, I've also read back in the day, they were experimenting with vitamin C versus AZT. And some of these studies, and the thing is, I don't have the details on this stuff. I don't have the details on this stuff, so I can't put this out here as like gospel fact, but some of the studies showed in the cases, which they don't give this stuff anymore, I don't think, that massive doses of vitamin C work better than AZT, but it was not the ordinary oral variety. It was like the intravenous or something, or I don't know what it was to tell you the truth. They just said vitamin C in a study, and it was a, a reference I found at some place when the doctor was talking about it, and I was thinking... Well, that's interesting, but I didn't get any details on what the study was about. But then I am suspecting that since some people have recovered from comas with other viral issues by getting large doses of vitamin C intravenously, uh, I'm kind of wondering, would that be a major controlling force of uh, HIV and STDs? Now, I know, I think, I don't know what the statistics are because I don't even think that people know. But I think that um, over 50% of the people in the sex industry uh, that are not like higher end, um, you know, on call peep girls or anything like that, they might have HIV. I would imagine they do. And in their situation, they're stuck between 
Um, they're just stuck in a situation they're never going to get out of, period, ever, till they die, uh, which makes it more hopeless for them. So I don't know if this is going to work, but I am suspecting, I am suspecting that liposomal vitamin C might be the good thing to take with HIV, but I don't know if it's going to work. But I'm suspecting it's going to work. Oral vitamin C will not cut cut it. I know that. But liposomal vitamin C is alleged to be. I hate to hate to even repeat this because I just don't believe it. Is alleged to be over six times more powerful than intravenous. I don't believe that. But I'm suspecting that it's a lot more powerful than oral vitamin C. In that case. I am suspecting that it should have a measurable difference on HIV virus, but I don't know. But considering that when it was around, when the AZT was around, nobody wanted to look in this type of stuff because it was too cheap. And I just mentioned about the profitability of the current drugs. I don't know if liposomal vitamin C is going to be that effective. If I would think that massive doses of intravenous vitamin C are effective, I would think so, because it seems to be effective on every single virus or toxin or cancer out there, but a, a person that is a streetwalker or something that doesn't have money or has money like cash basis and is not, uh, and can't even, if, even if they had the money, is not going to find any doctor in the United States that's going to give them intravenous vitamin C uh, and let alone that they're not going to be able to afford health insurance for a tripla or anything like that or uh, Tenever or whatever the other stuff is that's in there or whatever the hell they have maybe they can get this this might and I don't know I don't know but I the reason I want to say the only reason I'm putting this out here is that I have a very strong suspicion that enough of this stuff would make a major major I have a suspicion I got to put it that way. I don't know. I don't know. I do know that there's people out there that have been, uh, there's a, I don't know, there's some woman on the uh, internet someplace that she had a, her mother was, had a health food store and she was HIV positive for so many years and she took every freaking herb there was in a health food store for so many years and her immune system was still going backwards till she wind up getting the drugs to control it. Uh, so, and the others, well, let me just put it this way. You know, a lot of times, they, when they, I just want to put it this way. A lot of times, and I don't want to make it sound corny either, but a lot of times people that are down and out, the one thing they always want to have is hope. And I don't know if I'm giving you false hope here, but um, this might be something to really look into. It's not expensive. It can be bought any place. It's got to be liposomal, encapsulated vitamin C. It gets past the stomach, goes directly in the bloodstream, and then from there, it may not be measured in the blood after that because it's still encapsulated, but it eventually gets used up by the body. And despite, the, well, depends. It's a controversy. But um, I am now suspecting, if there's, I almost hate to say this, if there's one thing that's going to be like a very powerful force in the world that's going to combat just about everything cheaply, it's probably going to be something that's going to be in, in delivering vitamin C properly to the blood. And if the liposomal theory holds up, that would be the thing for the sex workers to take who are in a, it's basically stuck in a situation they're never going to get out of. I know there's other things they could take, like uh, selenium might help. Uh, there's been alleged things on that. Um, also, uh, astragalus root, but that's a little more exotic, you know. Uh, coconut oil and oregano oil might do a little bit. I don't know, but I do know that those things have been tried by other people, and uh, I, I don't know if they do work or not. You know, I I hate to I hate to see because anytime you read something on the internet, when it's a testimony, you can't trust it. You can't trust it at all. But what I'm suspecting about vitamin C is all with 
the real medical doctors have done some serious miracles with this stuff. But it can't just be oral vitamin C. Now, I don't know if liposomal vitamin C is as good as lip intravenous. If it's almost as good, it should do a damn good job if you're taking a lot of it. I don't want to say what to take, but, you know, they say there's no upper toxic limit. But it's a matter of take a couple a day, take a few a day, and keep up with it till I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. till you, If you don't feel bad, I guess up it to... I don't want to say. I don't want to say. It's probably going to have to be a lot more than a few of them a day. Not even at this dose of 750 milligrams. It's going to be more than that. But I don't want to say because then I'm giving out advice. But I am suspecting this. I'm suspecting this. That, that That's the only way I got to put it. That's the only way I could put it. But am I pretty knowledgeable? Yeah. But am I a doctor, medical professional? No. No, no. But um, I don't judge these people, and I don't like put them down. And, uh, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, the profession has been around a long time. It's been around since the ancient world. Uh, today, there's a lot of people that just hate these people. They want them to die off. They, You know, they say they deserve it because they, they sin, so tough, tough luck, you know. Uh, they shouldn't be thinking like that. They shouldn't, well... I don't know. Sometimes the most judgmental people are the most, you know, whatever. But, you know, if they're stuck in a situation, and actually even if they're not stuck in a situation, um, that should be another measure measure of protection. That and I can't really even call it protection because I don't know. I am highly suspicious that if liposomal vitamin C works as good or anywhere near as good as intravenous, Oh, man, that's, and I just think, you know, I don't want to put it out here as another one of those things that people put out that's nonsense. Because I heard a lot of nonsense on the internet. Um, Dr. Linus Pauling, the two-time Nobel Peace Prize winner, seemed to, always, and you know, since it hit not only his research, but before him, if 60 out of 60 polio cases were cured with massive, massive doses of intravenous vitamin C. That's telling me something. But, so, you know, sometimes people do have this death wish because they have, it's a hopeless situation. But on the other hand, you know, sometimes people just have a death wish. But if it's not a hopeless situation, maybe there's a ray of hope, uh, you will not have a death wish. So, anyway, I just want to put this out as like a... I don't know. I don't know how, what, how many I would reach on this deal, but it might be a minor public service announcement or something. But I can't guarantee your results. I don't know for a fact. I don't know for a fact. But I just know what I read a lot about. And um, it's what I keep getting from some of the lot of doctors. There's been no virus that has withstood up to massive doses of intravenous vitamin C. So you might be able to get. The effects of intravenous might be of intravenous vitamin C by taking good quality non-GMO liposomal vitamin C. It's good to take anyway. You know, I mean, it's still good to take. So in any case, it's not going to be a bad thing.